That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Land of Bad. The fifth film directed by William Eubank, which is being released courtesy of The Avenue Entertainment on February 16th, 2024. Do I know a William Eubank film? Yeah, we actually reviewed his last two. Oh. Uh, Paranormal Activity, Next of Kin. Okay. And Underwater with Kristen Stewart, oh. if you remember that. I remember having decent, I have a decent recollection of his sophomore film, The Signal from 2014. Okay. What is this movie about? A rookie Air Force combat controller and a seasoned drone pilot support a Delta Force team as they try to shift a mission gone wrong into a rescue operation. What's your pull quote? A goofy, distracting Russell Crowe is the only element to generate a reaction in this soulless extraction exercise, oscillating between drastic tonal shifts. You could call this the land of bland. Ooh. Okay, mine. <laughs> Land of Bad is a horrible movie title, but a satisfying action film that is unfortunately cheapened by an odd and distracting turn from Russell Crowe. I agree, it is cheapened, but if, if that element had been removed, I don't know how memorable the rest of it would be. I think if he weren't in the film and this care, if, this, if his character were removed completely, this would be a solid action film. Because I was... I mean, it got my heart rate up. There, there are like four scenes that are like pretty, if you're into that, I mean, it's not like as... It, it made me recall other things that are better about sure. doing something specifically the same. I will say that the entire operation feels very generic. So we're told that they're in like Southeast Asia. There are a lot of extremist groups. So we see that in this story, it's not clear to me where we are. It, I, I think we might be in like the Philippines somewhere, but this Delta Force team, mm -hmm. which includes Liam Hemsworth and Milo Ventimiglia. 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 And Luke Hemsworth. They are there to help extract uh, like a CIA operative. They call him a CIA spook. He's been gathering intel on a Russian arms dealer. And they, the Delta Force team, are being assisted by drone operators, Russell Crowe and a woman. Uh, Nia, played by Chika Ikagwa. And Nia, I think, I, I wish it just would have been her. Yeah. Like, if we would have taken Russell Crowe just left her, this would have been so much better. But anyway, they're assisting. So all of the Delta Force team members wear, like, earpieces, and their eye in the sky uh, would be Russell Crowe and Nia. Mm-hmm. So I, I found that part actually really interesting. And you referenced another movie with Tilda Swinton. Helen Mirren. Sorry, Helen uh, Mirren. Called Eye in the Sky. <laughs> I think Gavin Hood directed that. That's better. But, that, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, things go south real quick because when they try to extract the CIA person, the bad people uh, start shooting up shit. And well, they get there too late. Uh, they're already being murdered. <laughs> and then initially to the audience, we think that all of the Delta Force people have been killed except Liam. So now... Whose who's, uh, handle is Playboy. That's right, Playboy. Mm -hmm. So a nice chunk of the film is just Playboy out in these uh, woods, swamps, jungle. Trying to get to various extraction points, but they're, that are ruined at least on two occasions because the uh, enemy element is hot on his heels. But, you know, the exchange between Liam and Russell, I, I thought was interesting enough. Although, <laughs> Liam Hemsworth and Russell Crowe are playing two Americans who were born and raised in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And they actually talk about it quite a bit, which I thought was laughable. Since they're both Australian. In fact, Russell Crowe had Liam in his uh, directorial effort, Poker Face, if you remember. Which we reviewed. Not very good. But at a point when Liam's trying to figure out what to do and his comms go down, all of a sudden Milo pops up. So he's not dead. He, so so yeah. that's good. Mm -hmm. But he's saying, we need to go get our other fellow soldier because he's been captured he's not dead mm -hmm. bishop played by ricky waddle so they are like we're not going to go to the extraction point we're going to go back and get our buddy and then that's when russell crow and nia are told by their boss and there's an entire side plot about these two we'll get to but liam and milo get captured then the final act of the film, there's a lot of tension because we find out that 
the drone operators and the military base, which happens to be Nellis Air Force Base, which is in Vegas. So that's where Russell Crowe and Nia are. We find out that that team helping them, they've decided that they're going to blow up the area. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a series of bombs dropping. So if Liam and his buddies don't get out, they're going to die. And at the last minute, Liam's able to make contact with Russell Crowe. He stops the bombing. And then, of course, the guys, except for Milo, he gets killed, yeah. are extracted. Yes. Because, but, because they get they get escape and are uh, captured twice. Yeah, they get the... captured twice, which did provide some tension. But so the worst part of the film to me is this Russell Crowe character. So what do we know about him besides he's an Ohio native? He is, I mean, he looks like a 60-year-old man, so I'm assuming he's supposed to be his age. This man is, he has eight children, one on the way, but from his fourth wife. Mm -hmm. And we're told that, yeah, I've been in the military a long time, but I haven't gone up in rank because I need to be able to make, like, these bonuses that only apply to my current level in order to pay for all these kids and wives. So it's like Alec Baldwin. And then he's playing it like someone's crazy uncle and he has all these tantrums and it's just really... Because uh, right next door, there's a basketball game going on that everybody else is uh, like fixated upon, playing it noisily. They don't want the phone to be on in case his wife calls. Yeah, there's a big... Almost all of my notes are about how annoying Russell Crowe's character is, but he, we find out that he tells all these people, if the phone rings and it's my wife, you need to give it to me because she's going to go out to labor. But of course, they don't care because they're occupied with the game. They just make it all seem so unprofessional. Mm -hmm. But at a point, his Russell Crowe's boss tells he and Nia, y'all have already been like on the call for 10, for hours. 10 hours past your eight-hour shift. So you need to get up. You're not fresh. We're going to let someone else do it. Russell Crowe throws a tantrum that it seems like, I just can't even believe that you weren't like booted. Mm -hmm. But then we cut to him. So he goes, he, he leaves very upset and then goes to the grocery store. Like a Whole Foods. And there's a big point made that his wife is vegan. Mm -hmm. So we see him looking for like these vegan ingredients in what I guess is supposed to be comical. But what I found so annoying and slightly offensive is while we see Russell Crowe be bopping around Erewhon looking for vegan cashew butter, we see... Liam Hemsworth and his buddies being tortured. Yeah. So it just felt so like... It's jarring. It's super jarring. And then we see Liam trying to use the satellite phone to get help and he keeps calling and they, he either gets hung up on by the guys watching the game or he disconnects with Russell Crowe because his connection goes bad. Well, he's trying to call Russell Crowe's personal cell phone, which he gets from the guys in the mess hall. And Russell doesn't recognize the number, so he doesn't pick up because he's embroiled with conversations about veganism with his wife. And then he gets a voicemail and then drives back to the base. We didn't talk about the drive. He drives like a crazy person, busts into the base. I can't imagine that anyone entering a military base the way he did... Any, would, kind, any kind of federal building, yeah. ...wouldn't be immediately tackled. He drives in like he's being chased... And then he runs into the building, pushes people aside, and he makes it all the way into the call center and is able to press the button to stop the bomb. Basically, yeah. Wouldn't you think that he would have been, if not tackled, or shot? Like, it, I just don't understand. It's the very last seconds. And then, uh, isn't Nia still in there? Because she's been sent home, but for some reason is still in the base. She's back in there with this other white man that uh, had, was about to, you know, order these bombs to be dropped and then very last second it stops and then you see Liam Neeson pop up and he's waving to them on the screen it's like that, oh I there he that, is I think that's a continuity issue because she was sent home why is she still in the command center and then yeah the moment where we see Liam after he's been saved like wait or after he realizes the bombs didn't get dropped we see his little heat figure waving to the drone but then the final scene is now that Wow. Russell Crowe gets mad because he, he goes into the like the break area where the TV is. They've taken the phone off the hook. They've t that, that's the second time they've... Well, first time they turned the ringer mm -hmm. off, which is so disrespectful and unprofessional. He's like, you know, one of your fellow soldiers tried to call here in a very dangerous situation and you fools didn't pick up. 
So good job, everyone. Isn't it our job to keep everyone safe? And then he proceeds to tear up the TV with a golf club. Uh huh. And then the final scene is him outside, having not been arrested. With Nia, who's been waiting to ask him a question. And what does she job. ask him? Would you walk me down the aisle? Because I don't have a father. Daddy. And then they start dancing. And she's like, do you know how to twerk? And that is the last line. That's the last line of the movie. Him saying, I don't know how to twerk. <laughs> Why? Why did they sully this decent action film with very serious subject matter? I don't know. Uh, Eubank reunited with his Signal screenwriter David Fregario for this, who also wrote a terrible film called Crypto a couple years ago starring Luke Hemsworth and Kurt Russell. If you haven't seen that and you want to watch something bad, I, I, I recommend that. But the stuff with Hems Liam Hemsworth trying to get out and uh, survive, those are well staged enough. It looks good, but can, it reminded me of a, a better film. And I don't like Peter Berg or Mark Wahlberg, but I think Lone Survivor is a pretty damn decent film of in the past decade that is worth checking out instead of this. Um, it also made me want to rewatch Black Hawk Down. I, I think there are a lot of films that are trying to uh, deal with drone operators, drone pilots that just aren't good. And this is one of them. Another one is Good Kill with Ethan Hawke, which is also about a decade old, and January Jones. I like this movie more than you did. I thought uh, the action sequences were well done and pretty tense. Liam trying to get to two different extraction points and getting stopped. There's a point where he's like, there are, uh, bad guys, they use a term that I can't recall right now, but bad guys, Russell Crowe can see from the drone that bad guys are approaching him. So then there's a really, I think, tense scene with a dog mm -hmm. sniffing out Liam Hemsworth, but he's able to make it out. And when they get captured and they're stuck being held hostage, I thought all of that was well done. Sure, it, it just felt, I, I think it just felt a little soulless. Sure, sure. When we first meet Russell Crowe, he is acting crazy because in the break room, the little like Nespresso pods aren't being put back. I knew we were in trouble then, at that moment. And he's mm -hmm. like grumbling to himself, like no one takes pride and it's like... <laughs> at that moment, I actually had to double check. Does he have one or two Oscars because... Oh. <laughs> it's, it's a, one, he only has one. But uh... every scene in Nellis Air Force Base was a joke. At one point while... Russell Crowe and Nia are in the call center and it's tense, like they're trying to talk Liam through something. Some guy busts into the call center. Starbucks run. Starbucks run. <laughs> Do you want anything? And Russell Crowe's like, shut that door. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Russell Crowe fighting with his boss. I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't either. No. They, he made a punk out of that colonel because <laughs> I was shocked. Um, yeah, I don't have much else to say. I don't either. It just... It... Mm. What would you give Land of Bad? It's a film that happened. Uh, two. I would give it two and a half out of five. I thought it was okay. I think on an airplane it would be all right. Anything else? No. Join us on Patreon and listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>